Welcome back everyone to part three. We're gonna continue with this. I wasn't planning on it originally, but let's just roll with it, I guess. So we left off with this article, Have We Turned a Blind Eye to Domestic Terrorism? Talking about how some types of hate are more tolerated than others. Um, and let's, let's get to the bottom of this individual and let's see what the white supremacists actually think. That's what we're gonna get in the next article. So we'll read some of this uh, propaganda uh, from Time says, among the more off-putting commentary in the immediate aftermath of the attack of the temple in Wisconsin were these musings of a number of TV journalists speculating why the shooter targeted this community, right? Uh, why did he have a beef with the Sikhs, one asked. Then came the Bemu's refrain, Sikhism is different from Islam, as if somehow everything would make more sense had there been six Muslims shot dead on a balmy summer day in Wisconsin. So, And one of the things I remembered from the... Uh, individual I was talking about right here was he mentioned in that video in that RT video about anti-Islamification he actually used the term the Americas the American people have been conditioned to fear Muslims and I thought about it. I'm like well gee no shit right uh, everything that you saw on the TV after 9-11 was the Muslims are going to come get you in the middle of the night. The brown people, the Muslims, Ali Ali Akbar, uh, God willing, we're going to kill Americans. Americans are the scum, right? The swine. Uh, Jack Bauer going around torturing people. They were conditioned for this. You know what I mean? That was the divide and conquer that I was talking about. They're pitting Christians and Muslims against each other. So they're going on there and it's saying this. On a lot of levels, it doesn't matter whether the dead were Sikh or Muslim, uh, not least because my, Wade Michael Page, another three... Uh, named name, which is a hint that it's, this is a black op, the terrorists who killed them probably wouldn't have cared. Yes, Sikhs, many of whom grown long beards and wear turbans, have faced shameful discrimination in the decades since 9-11. The unwitting scapegoats of anti-Muslim fervor nationwide, but to Page, an army vet immersed in a world of far-right hate. The people he shot were brown-skinned and uh, irredeemably the other. So apparently that was enough to pull the trigger. So, you know, I want to know what type of ideology these black ops guys that he was with, the other three other shooters, uh, the other shooter that was with James Holmes in that call, in that at that night that tried to kidnap uh, that child, and I think, believe he even stabbed her. Uh, what are the mentality of these individuals? Are, are they nihilist? I think they're nihilist. If you ask me, I don't think they believe in anything, and um, I think those are the most dangerous people because their crimes will never go uh, known. Yet they'll demonize people with a with uh, with an with an ideology that just basically wants to be left alone. They're not going to go on in the uh, on the preemptive attack like the U.S. Uh, Zionist-controlled government uh, or other governments, uh, for that matter. No, they're not. They're going to be peaceful as their own people are being what breeded out as their birth rates go down, as their sense of heritage is destroyed systematically generation through the generations. And then if they talk about it, they are somehow uh, going on the attack. They are violent and um, they are now domestic terrorists. So, like I said, I'd like to see those black ops, and I, you know, I'd like to see what their ideology is. White supremacists at Stormfront react to the skin Sikh temple. This is from Right Wing News. Come check it out. Links will be posted in YouTube's video description. So it goes on there, says, back in the day, Right Wing News used the semi-regularly uh, cover the loopiness that cranks conspiracy theorists and white supremacists spewed out on the web. At the time, it seemed like a fun diversion from politics, but since then, a lot of the same wackiness has been uh, getting more play in the mainstream media. See, see Jerome Corzai, Louis Farrakhan, the Bush, blah, 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 whatever. But it goes on and says, Still, after white supremacist Wade Michael Page shot up a Sikh temple, I wondered how would white supremacists react? Would they be thrilled? Uh, that he did it? Would they approve of the ends but not the means? Would they be worried about blowback? So he was curious and he headed over to the Stormfront, which is a huge white power forum, and it goes on there and it says, now before we get started, here are some of the things most recently posted in the threads at the time that this individual was putting this together. Um, what, do the, what do we do with the Jews once we have won? Inventions by the Nazis, United Clans of America still around, how to respond to being called a Nazi, zero tolerance for homosexuals, uh, conserving the white race and conserving nature, white metal winners. So it says, I think that gives you a pretty good idea of the sort of dirt bags you'll find at Stormfront. Uh, but what would what would said dirt bags think of Wade Michael Page? Here are some of the representative quotes. First one, I'll say this about him: his band and apathy wasn't bad. 
it's a decent heart hate core ban he should have concentrated on that instead of this self-defeating act which only serves the interests of the wn's enemies white nation's enemies and not the white nation enemy themselves okay i do not think this was an isolated incident of a lone nutcase i'm willing to wager the shooter was an expendable torpedo which i believe as well said one of the victims of the shooting was the father of this individual Kaleka, who is in the process of making a very controversial expose film of government cover-up of ufos and that syrians i think this cannot be stressed enough so it goes on there and it says in this event the Zionist occupied government has got their dream come true, which is one, an event they can call domestic terrorism, two, demonize white males, three, demonize firearms, and four, demonize veterans. And the third said, I think it's terrible what happened to the Sikhs. Sure, I want them in their homeland, but they didn't deserve that. The next one said, but then why kill Sikhs? Killing a bunch of elderly Sikhs who were praying in their temple on a Sunday morning is like being the shit out of the scrawniest and quietest kid in the room who goes to an abusive family every day when the guy who raped your girlfriend is sitting right beside you and you do nothing to him there's so many uh legitimate enemies it's just so stupid to pick the Sikhs. yeah another person said he didn't use his brain he didn't accomplish a damn thing from what i understand the idiot who committed the shooting had a 9-11 tattoo which is pretty good indicator that he fell for the jewish neocon um yes a line hook and sinker morons like this are why many of us here try so hard to break the so-called white nations out of the Jewish neocon brainwashing. It goes on and says, if only this is the beginning to look pretty serious, my friends. Sikhs need to return to their homeland, but not in boxes, for God's sake. So the author goes on and says, despite some of the dumb and gross comments above, they were only a handful of rah, 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 we're glad Paige killed all those Sikhs. So they were far and few between and were strongly condemned by the other members. So let's take this narrative forward. Remember this article? This was from, what, July 4th? Is that what it was? Yeah, that was. It was very uh, kind of an ironic date. It says here, and by no coincidence, Homeland Security report lists liberty lovers as terrorists. That's right. So it goes on there. It says definitions from a 2011 study entitled Profiles of Perpetrators, Perps of Terrorism, produced by the National Consortium of Study of Terrorism Response to Terrorism. Americans who believe their way of life is under attack. Americans who are fiercely nationalistic as opposed to universal and international in orientation, i.e. globalist. Uh, people who consider themselves anti-global. There you go. Presumably those who are weary of the loss of American sovereignty. Weary or aware? See, see how they do that? Americans who are suspicious of centralized federal authority. So, uh, Americans who are reverent of individual liberty. People who believe in conspiracy theories that involve grave threat to national sovereignty and or personal liberty. And yes, I know, this is Alex Jones' site. But they covered this, and so I'm going to include this article because I can't find it anywhere else. National Guard magazine cover story specifies Americans as greatest terror threat. That's right, this is the National Guard. So it goes on here, says it features a story cover title, The Threat at Home. So... It goes on here, and it's meant to desensitize Guard members, readers, to the idea of pursuing and capturing Americans on American soil, thus finalizing the end of Posse Comitatus. The article begins by saying the mission to prevent terrorism on U.S. soil starts with Al-Qaeda, but it doesn't end there. It goes on and says homegrown terrorists, hostile nations, and lone radical wolves, lone wolves basically, present perils too, and the methods of destruction are vast. Ask Homeland Security experts about the dangers, and you'll get a range of answers. But one thing is clear, the hunt can never stop. For the new face of terror, and then it actually has this, in search of the hidden enemy, says Senator Collins, who in the past co-sponsored overreaching cybersecurity bills and is in the Homeland Security and Government's Committee, tells the author that the next terrorist could be someone you went to school with. I saw another title in mainstream media somewhere in uh, compiling all these articles. Uh, the terrorists could live next to you, you know, next door. And many of you have probably seen this and are aware of this um, thing that was written and put out there in the media recently. The 2010 U.S. Army's Operating Concept 2016-28 was published. The U.S. Army Tactical Manual describes how to control domestic insurrection, talking about how the new theater will be at home against Americans. The writer, a retired U.S. Army colonel, ignites firestorm with article on crushing a Tea Party insurgency. So he wrote this article and he says here, 
uh, among those increasingly concerned about what they say is a distinct anti-civilian tone that has infected much of the military and homeland security since 2009. This, of course, is all the stuff, the propaganda that they're giving these National Guard and these active duty troops uh, about Americans and stuff like that. And plus the mission, you know, to be fighting these Muslims and stuff like that. And then you got people back in the United States that are saying, you know, what the hell are we doing over there? We don't support you. Um, and so then they're, they're, they're trying to create this anti-civilian sentiment so that American troops, when they, they will come back, they will fire on American citizens. According to the vision articulated by Benson, future warfare will be conducted on our own soil. The military will use its full force against our own citizens, and the enemy will be average citizens whose values resonate with those articulated by the Tea Party. Several items of interest are to be noted in the scenario the Army uses to describe the Tea Party activists right-wing extremists, insurrectionists, all of whom are lumped together with militias and organizations that are considered racist and anti-immigration. By contrast, those who oppose the Tea Party are referred to as mainstream. Yeah, they call it anti-immigration, basically. If you're for protecting your borders, as far as immigration goes, uh, you're anti-immigration. If you are not really for, it's for legislation for this, but just if you're not really for the promotion, if you're not for the paying of tax dollars to to kill, you know, young ones, i.e. abortion, um, and when it goes against your morals, then, uh, you know, you're anti-abortion. So this is, this is the type of concepts or theories or, or tactics that were discussed in um, Orwell's 1984. So, uh, border authorities to test surveillance balloons. Something new soon will be floating in the skies above the Texas-Mexico border as federal authorities test balloon-like military surveillance devices to see if they might help with border monitoring. And remember, they just closed down, what, nine border stations. Remember that. I just covered that. So they're going to put these uh, surveillance balloons. They're going to test them. Whoa, look at this. They just tested this just the other day. U.S. Army's spy blimp spotted hovering over New Jersey may take up cargo duties. So I've been talking about these since I started in 2009, these and they're great because they're high up there. You can't shoot them down. And um, they're going to be running on solar power. So it's good for like a Mad Max postman type scenario. Like uh, uh, cyborgs and machines and stuff and drones. Avatar officer installed at Arizona Mexican border station. So yeah, they're going to have a new um, freeing up human officers to catch drug smugglers, right? Oh, they're going to catch drug smugglers. Well, that's kind of too bad because Mexican official says CIA manages the drug trade. It says they don't fight drug traffickers. In fact, uh, they try to manage the drug trade. So they close down stations. They get rid of actual people. And they put these spy blimps up there and these avatars to uh, regulate the border. So there's many of, many things for people to be concerned of, of these issues as far as their sovereignty and their government and stuff goes, if you believe in that, nationalism and all that. Uh, demand for water outstrips supply. Groundwater use is unsustainable in many of the world's major agricultural zones. So also we have what? U.S. drought drives up food prices worldwide. Guys in Oregon are getting arrested for collecting rainwater. Uh, Ontario raw milk farmer says federal inspectors raided their co-op. That's right. They were raided. And this is because they're trying to offer healthy, nutritious milk, unpatronized milk. But they say, oh, it's a danger to the uh, public's health. Also, they're ripping up gardens, that vegetable gardens that people are trying to grow. So when people try to go around what they're doing, these actions to create all this famine and these end time scenario, well, they get arrested and they get SWAT teamed. But they're not the only ones. Recent shutdowns of children's lemonade stands and SWAT style raids on small farmers have inspired these mothers. Uh, activists who take the message to the Capitol or mothers are going to risk jail over lemonade and milk stands.